Hi, my name is Polly Frenchu and I teach here at Dunwoody College of Technology in the Electrical Construction and Maintenance Department. Today we're going to be learning about conduit and conduit bending. All right, so far we've looked at a 90 degree stub, we've looked at an offset, and now we're going to actually look at an offset where we need an exact value or an exact distance when we do our bend. When we do that, normally all we need to worry about is our multiplier. If I don't have a specific length that I need to worry about, I can just use my multiplier, I can bend my conduit, and I'm good and I can fit in. If I need to have a specific value, I have to then take into account that shrink. Now, as you remember, when I said shrink, anytime I do less than a 90 degree bend, and we showed ourselves on our kick, how on a half inch piece of conduit for any kind of a kick, we're going to lose some of that length. So when we want to set out and lay out a conduit for a specific night or offset bend, we're going to end up looking at shrink and that multiplier. So if I take another piece of conduit here with a specific length, and we can use that 10 inch obstruction that we just looked at. But let's say that 10 inch obstruction is actually, say, oh, 20 inches in. Okay, but if I just put it at 20, bend it for a 10 inch obstruction, guess what's going to happen? That conduit's going to come up short because I don't take into account my shrink. So in order to make sure that conduit is the correct length, I have to look at shrink. So if we recall, we had a multiplier value, and that multiplier value was based upon my degree bend. So when I looked at a 30 degree bend, I knew I had a multiplier of 2. I had a 45 degree bend, my multiplier is going to be 1.4. And if I have a 22 and a half inch multiplier, 22 and a half inch degree, I'm going to have a multiplier of approximately 2.5. In addition to that multiplier, we, I gave you some shrink values. Now those shrink values fit with this degree bend. So when we look at shrink, the amount that we're going to lose for a 30 degree bend, we're going to get a shrink of a quarter inch. With that 45 degree bend, we're going to get a shrink of 3 eighths of an inch. And if I have a 22 and a half inch bend, degree bend, I'm going to have a shrink of 3 sixteenths. Now this shrink value is actually a quarter inch per one inch of rise. So we can take it, it's going to be a quarter inch per one inch rise. Same thing with my 3 eighths of an inch. I'm going to have 3 eighths of an inch shrink up per one inch of rise. And the same with my 3 sixteenths. It'll go 3 sixteenths inch per one inch of rise. So what does that mean? If I have an offset, and that offset is going over a 10 inch obstruction, that means that this overall length or this length from this length is going to shrink up depending upon the amount of degree bend I'm using. So in the case of say a 10 inch and I'm doing a quarter inch per rise, say I did a 30 degree bend, my quarter inch rise I would actually lose 10 times one quarter inch or two and a half inches. That means I lose two and a half inches of length. So if my obstruction is at 20 inches, that's the start of it, I have to, to take into account that I need to add an additional two and a half inches to my measurement in order for it to come out to the correct value or correct bend. So when we look at this, let's say we're starting here. My obstruction is 20 inches. I'm going to do 30 degree bends. So if I do 30 degree bends, I know I have to take that 20 plus I have to add an additional two and a half inches to account for the shrink value. I now have my new A mark. I then have to go to my multiplier. I have a 10 inch obstruction. I have two for my multiplier. 
So I'm going to take that 10 times 2, and I'm going to make my B mark then 20 inches from that point. So my overall bend length then, mark A would be at 22 and a half, mark B then would be at 44 and a half inches. That would give me that 20 inches in from here to here, accounting for my shrink, and I wouldn't have to worry so much about the tail. I could cut off that tail to fit. So whenever you have to do an exact bend, you have to look at shrink whenever you're using less than a 90 degree bend. So that's our offsets. But now what happens when I have an obstruction like this, but then guess what? I got to come back down again. Okay, so when I have this, I have what we call a four point saddle, or what I like to say is I have two offsets back to back, would be a four bend saddle. Now I would use this one because I have one bend here, one bend there, one bend there, and one bend there, so I have four bends. I would use this one for a square object. Okay, so if it's a square object, I'm going to do what we call a four bend saddle around that object. If I have a round object, a round circle object, like another conduit, I'm going to use a three bend saddle, one that slowly goes over that round piece. So how do we begin a four bend saddle? Well, it's basically two back to back offsets. So let's take a look at our problem here. We're going to make it a little bit smaller so I can show my bending a little better. So I have an obstruction here. And my obstruction from this side over to here, to this point here, is, let's say, 25 inches. OK, I'll make this obstruction a little shorter so it makes it a little easier. And let's say my obstruction is 3 inches tall. Okay, so from that point to that point, I have 25 inches. I have 3 inches for my height of my obstruction. And now I want to see what kind of length I have for my obstruction. So my length of my obstruction, let's say, is 6 inches. That would be equivalent to this mark. So I want to basically bend that conduit around that 3 by 6 inch obstruction. So how do we go about doing it? If you recall on our offset, we had our point A and our point B. And the reason we call this A is because it is the first bend I'm going to make. My point B is my second bend I'm going to make. When I do a four point saddle or a four bend saddle, I now have this bend and this bend. And then I'm going to make a bend here, which is going to be my C bend. That's going to be my next bend. And then I have my D bend, which will be my last bend. So I'm actually going to bend it four different times. So how do you lay it out? It's actually not too difficult. We take that same information that we had on our shrink and our multiplier. So if I have a 25 inch length to my A mark, I have to take into account that shrink. Okay, because I'm going to lose a certain amount of length because I have some bends happening. So I, if I'm going to use, since it's a 3 inch bend, let's do a 30 degree bend. So I want to take 30 degrees. Okay, and because I'm doing an offset, that means B is going to be a 30 and A is going to be a 30 as well as C and D. They're also going to be 30 degree bends. As we recall, our multiplier for a 30 degree bend is equal to 2, and our shrink is equal to 1 quarter inch. So if I look at that 25 inches to my obstruction, I want to make my A mark first. So I'm going to take and I'm going to measure 25 inches and put a mark there. However, I have a certain amount of shrink for doing that 30 degree bend, so I need to add an additional value of 1 quarter times my height of 3. 
So one quarter times three, I'm going to add three quarters of an inch. So my A mark then is going to be 25 and three quarters of an inch. That'll be my first bend. My B mark, if you recall, is going to be using the multiplier of two. And we know we have a three inch obstruction, so we're going to take that two times three and we're going to come back six inches from our A mark and that's going to be my B mark. My B mark then would be labeled at 19 and three quarters of an inch. I now have a six inch obstruction, so I have to keep that into account. So I'm going to add from that 25 and three quarters to the end of that obstruction, which becomes my C mark. So I add six plus my 25 and three quarters, so I'm going to make my C mark at 31 and three quarters of an inch. My last mark is going to be my D mark, my final bend. Because this is also going to be coming off of that 30 degree bend, I know I'm going to use the multiplier of 2. So in order to take from my C to my D, I take 2 times 3, or 6, and add it to my C mark of 31 and 3 quarters. That then becomes my D mark. This is how I would lay out my conduit for a four bend or four point saddle. When we come back, we will then bend our four point saddle and go on and do a three bend saddle. Thanks.